<laughs> you cannot repeat any of that. <laughs> right, let's get started. met Chris a few weeks ago in her beautiful van that she's traveling on the road with for how long now? Three years. Three years. Chris is a female, solo female van dweller, has lots of wisdom to share, and a beautiful basic build out that is affordable and easy super accessible for most of us. Chris is a self-described introvert and is gracing us with her generous offer to talk today and uh, share her story with you and her beautiful home on wheels, the, the NV3500. So without further ado, let's get to know Chris some more. Hello. <laughs> hello. And hello out there. <laughs> so Chris, what took you to the road? Um, I looked at the size of my social security check and I looked at rentals across the entire United States. And so that was not compatible. There was nothing in the United States that many of us older women could rent. And so, you know, I discovered that women were traveling in vehicles or vans or tiny RVs and decided to explore it for, you know, I probably looked at it for about two years before deciding that was what I was going to do. And I drove by a used car lot in the middle of Barrie, Vermont, and it was sitting there waiting for me, and there are no vans in central Vermont, so I grabbed it, $6,000, it's a 2012, it was a plumbing air conditioning truck, as most of these are, and it met two of my major requirements. I had to be able to stand up, because I was going to be in it the rest of my life, and I wanted no windows. Now, you'll see, I did add one window but I really like the, the stealth aspect of the Dodge, uh, of the Nissan, um, because it looks like a work truck and I can park just about anywhere without any problems. Leading up to this, the little bit I know about you, I find very inspiring. You, you are a woman who has reinvented your life a few times over. So, I, <laughs> so it seems like hitting the road, um, it is a very courageous thing to do. And yet, for you, it seems like part of the natural way you live your life. It seemed very natural to me. My my first real career was as a midwife in Texas, and I did that for about 15 years. And when I moved up to Seattle, the midwifery laws are a little bit different there. Um, and there were plenty of excellent midwives. So they really didn't need me to be a midwife. I started working in public schools there. Um, when I went back to Texas to help my dad through the end of his life, they had opened a new prison. And the pay was very good to be a correctional officer. Mm -hmm. So I was a correctional officer for about 10 years. And then I was promoted to parole officer and was parole officer for many more years. So from midwife <laughs> to correctional officer <laughs> to parole officer. Yes. And then I ended up in Vermont and uh, joined the public schools in the area of, of behavior management. So you, you've seen quite a lot of of life, of how... Have life has not been boring. No. <laughs> no, has not been boring. And you raised your own family as well. Yeah? I did. You know, four and sons and a daughter. And you had sticks and bricks. Yes. Yes. Very large sticks and bricks. And uh, as uh, many uh, older Americans do, you end up with your parents' things and sometimes your grandparents' things, and that fills up. And so the minimalizing took probably almost a year to get rid of everything I owned. And that was, that was difficult. I knew I'd from reading other women's stories online, I knew I didn't want a storage unit. Yeah. There was nothing I was going to say. I'm going to take the bare necessities. And yeah. that's what's in there, the bare necessities. Yeah, you were able to do that. It took a year of At hard work. At least a year. <laughs> oh, and you were able to do it. Yes. That's, that's, that's terrific. Yes. And here you are now. It's been three years mm -hmm. on the road. And do you have any favorite spots that you like to go to? Um, well, in the winter, I do go down to um, southwest Arizona which is just beautiful. And there's endless hiking there and gorgeous weather all winter long. Um, I always take my time going back and forth across the nation between Vermont and Arizona because I want to see um, things I haven't seen. You know, it, it sounds like I had a lot of careers and I did, but I was primarily a mother raising mm. the children and there wasn't a lot of travel in my life. Yeah. So 
I'm really kind of excited and fascinated by everything I see. Uh, but I loved being in uh, Selma uh, because you read about it in your classroom. And then when you go to Selma, uh, the bridge is there, you know, that they, they walked across, mm. you know. And, but under the bridge, there are tables and chairs. And the people who walked across the bridge are still there. And they will tell you their story in person, which is so much better than reading a textbook. And so that was really exciting, spending some time in Selma. And on my way back this time, I stopped in Eureka Springs. And I'm in love with Eureka Springs. Oh. It's just like a, a New Orleans, but much further north. And it was, it was just delightful. I stayed way too long in Eureka Springs. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like you're uh, discovering... The, the world that you can only find out about by living it, by yes. going there. You know, so often we people, other people who haven't done van life, look at van lifers and think, oh, how can you live in that tiny little box? But we actually have access to the whole world. Yes, and I'm not inside there all day long. I'm walking the streets because I love to walk and I love to get acquainted with people and yeah. see all of the sights. And it's a... a a wonderful freedom to be able to go into these beautiful craft stores and know you can't buy anything. So there's no pressure. You can really enjoy the store and say, oh, that's really nice and that's really nice and um, not spend any money because there's no room to add anything else in that van. I love that. I've been having that experience too, where I experienced almost every store more like an art gallery or a museum. Right. Even if it's just a home goods store, because mm -hmm. I can look and admire it but i can't i'm not going to bring it home no yeah no and at my age um that it, it just it's not really as morbid as it sounds but i have all the clothes that i will need from now to the end of my life you know i buy quality clothes and so i never have to buy any more clothes i'm not fashionable but i have really nice quality clothes right um, yeah and the, what you have is what you've chosen yes yes so, um before we take an inside look at your van would it be um, all right to ask a little bit about your family and how they accepted your decision? Um, my family was pretty used to me being maybe slightly off the beaten track, so it mm -hmm. didn't bother them a bit. Oh. Uh, one of my sons wanted the van a couple of years ago because he and his wife thought they would be able to move to Canada, and I said no. And then my, my daughter discovered that a lot of college students are living in vans in the parking lot at colleges right. to save on the dorm. And she's like, well, I can just take it to college. And I said, no, <laughs> so your son uh, and your you daughter guys can both. just, you know, wait a few years and fight it out. <laughs> but this is my van and my home. So well, they actually wanted your the van for their home. Yes. Now, how did they feel about their mother living in the van? They're perfectly fine with it. They all came out to Arizona this year to see me. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, they don't fit in the van, so they all had to sleep in the tent. Mm -hmm. And I had the nice, comfortable van, and they had to sleep out in the tent in the mm -hmm. desert. And we got to hike together and mm -hmm. explore Arizona together. It was really nice that they all flew out to see me at different times. So it was a really busy winter. Oh, and that, that just goes to show that there are ways you could still have family family and friends oh, yeah. visit when you're in the van. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's great. You have a lot of wisdom that I know you're going to share with us as we take a tour of your van about safety, about comfort, and, um, and other things. I'm really looking forward to everyone seeing Chris's van. So I'm going to open this door. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> All right. the then I'll get on this side. Drum roll, please. So, I'm going to show you just a couple of my favorite features just in the door area. This is huge. This will fit all of your shoes. The other door is the same way, and so that's where uh, my shoes stay. I am a map collector, maps, paper maps. Some of you might remember paper maps, uh, so I keep all of my paper maps. But then, look what's here. <laughs> storage drawers under each seat. Is that not amazing? Wow. I love it. Okay. And then a, a massive um, glove compartment, which I won't open. But this seat looks weird, right? Because, but I don't need a passenger. So it'll go up. But it was because it's a work truck, it was designed to lay down and be a desk for whoever's working. Oh. Um, so when I bought it, the, it had, a, you know, some uh, clipboards and that sort of thing here from uh, the previous owners. So, That's really handy. 
That's it, it very handy. It doesn't have a headrest. Well, I had to take it off so it wouldn't hit here because I love shoving it way up. And that gives this entry uh, like four or five more inches and feels really spacious. Oh, it sure does. That yeah. opens it right up. So that when you walk in, it's a wider end. Yeah, because normally it would be this wide, but we had to do a little construction there. The floor is, uh, you know, I lost about two inches of height. It's just um, three-quarter inch foam board and then plywood and then laminate. And we trimmed it out a little bit. It's a little rough now that we've been going in and out of it for a few years. Um, but the floor was super easy to do. I did not attach the floor to the floor of the truck. The weight was enough, so a lot of people worry about how do I ta attach the floor. You don't need to attach the floor. <laughs> you lay down the foam board, lay down your uh, your plywood, and put the laminate on. And the tension just holds it in. Right, the right? tension holds it in. Now, I know it was really easy to cut the plywood because I cut the laminate to fit first, and I'm, I'm not the laminate, the foam board. And so that was super easy to cut around the wheel wells and then bring it back out and put it on the plywood and draw the shape of oh. the wheel wheels on the plywood and then just lay them in there. Nice. So that worked really well. Shall we go in? Yeah. All right. Please. I love my handle here. This is the other table. You can see I don't cook. <laughs> Wait, I'm going to get it. There we go. It. So it just hooks up like that. <laughs> and that latch again is just to keep it from bouncing around when I'm driving. But I very seldom use it, but it would fit the one burner Coleman stove with, that I have. Um, but I usually cook outside if I cook. That's nice to have that option, isn't it? It's nice to have the option. And then you can tell that if I close the door, that window right there would be just above where I was cooking. Oh, right. So, for, the air, for the ventilation. Yeah. Yes. You want to come in with me? I'd love to. Okay. Be careful stepping up. Okay. Let's see. Hold on to that handle. Hold there on to go. that handle. And we're going to look at another amazing amount of storage up here. I have... An entire library up here. Ooh. Huge books because this is what I love to do in the winter is reading. Um, and then odds and ends. And then you'll notice soon enough that we don't have electricity in here. So I have my fairy lights. Oh, <laughs> and I have like two strings of fairy lights. And I have two more strings I haven't got up yet. But it's uh, cozy at night. It's enough to read at night. I don't know. It cost me, uh, you know, a few little batteries a couple of times a year. So that's it for electricity in here. There's nothing else that's electric. There's no power pack for anything. There's no power solar. pack. There's no solar panels. There's nothing uh, to break down or go wrong or, you know, and there wasn't, wasn't anything I had to learn about because that was really intimidating when I was looking at the videos uh, and people were talking about watts and converting it into voltage and all of this. And I'm going, my grandparents did just fine with no electricity. Right. So I, no. So for three years. No for three years, no electricity. No cooler. No cooler. No cooler. No electricity. What about heat? Uh, no heat because I'm in Arizona. Oh, of course. You yeah. know, it's 70 degrees in the daytime. Might get down to 35, maybe on a really cold night, it might get down to 29, but the day is going to bounce back to 60 degrees. So and that's you're out, fine. That's outdoor temperature. Yeah, that's Something outdoor temperature. I have found in the Blue Wonder is that it's 10 degrees warmer in the vehicle. Probably than at it least is outside. What, at have least you noticed anything like yeah, that in your at least. Energy? Plus, I don't have any air leaks because I don't have the windows, right. and so I don't have the worry that people have when they're putting up their reflex and the blankets on the windows. And that's another reason to not have windows. This, however, does have an enormous amount of Havelock wool in it. So I put my money into insulating the ceiling, insulating the floor, and insulating the walls. And that was the majority of our, my money, and I feel comfortable that it was a good, good investment. Floor, no. ceiling, and walls are insulated with Havelock wool. Yes. Which is non-toxic, I believe. It's wool. It's yeah, wool. it's yeah. pure wool. It's definitely non-toxic. Okay, so this looks like a chair. Doesn't it look cute? Oh, I, oh, that's cozy. I love my cozy little chair. Are you ready? Move the pillow. Move blanket one. Move blanket two. 
And there it is. This is the toilet system. It's a bucket stabilized by the wooden crate so that it will never tip over. Go to Dollar General, get these eight gallon size. It's the only size that fits well. They have smaller ones, doesn't work. They have bigger ones, pain in the butt. Okay, so, so get the eight gallon size and you can line it with three or four or you can line it with 10, you know, if you want to line it with 10. Now what we use in it, I'm going to bring it to you. Don't film my butt. Okay. Okay. Sit on this, uh, yes, chair? sit right there. Oh, oh, everybody, you should know. Yes. That right now, I'm sitting on that chair, that that passenger seat. Yeah. So sh there's not a need for a swivel. No. You just sit on the back of right. it. Okay. So in the toilet from Tractor Supply is horse stall bedding, and it's a uh, beautiful pine scent. And they expand when they get wet. This is far cheaper than cat litter. And it comes in, I think it's a 40 pound bag. Uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah, you have to have some storage in back. I have a five gallon bucket that's full of the pine and I just bring it a little bit in at the same at a time. How long uh, does that last you as one person using full time? Um, I can probably, well, generally I'm in communities. So during the daytime, I have public toilets in a coffee shop or in Walmart or that type of thing. And so for me, it's only nights and that will last like two, three nights. And then it's just, it never gets stinky, pardon mm -hmm. the expression, mm -hmm. never gets stinky, but it would eventually get too uh, heavy for just a plastic bag. Right. You know, so you want to change it out about every three days. So a 40 yeah. pound supply. Uh, that 40 pound supply will last forever because I put about a cup and a half into the toilet itself. Oh my. So, okay, that's, that's yeah, it, it takes forever. You will see there was no bilge. I looked at my house and said, what do I have in my house? <laughs> and I had a wicker dresser in my house that was already spray painted uh, in the colors that I love. I did add a few baskets. These baskets are um, screwed down, so they're not going to go anywhere. And so added one shelf, cheap from uh, Lowe's or Home Depot. This is just plastic pretend press tin. Um, comes in uh, like a four by four, maybe a two by two sheet and uh, really two sided up. tape to put it on. It dresses it up. It really dresses it up. I love it. <laughs> when you get these vans, sometimes they already have panels on them. And if you can see here, this was one of the original panels. These simply pop off with a screwdriver and you can put in all of your wool insulation and put them right back on. Mm. So it was so simple to get on the road with this. You can show a couple of more of these panels down here. I'm not sure you have enough light. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's coming up just fine. Yeah, but those are the original panels that came with the truck. And they look like press board. Or... They are just press board. They're just something to hold that insulation in. Okay. Um, the bed, I wanted it high enough that I would have a lot of storage underneath it. And But I wanted to be able to sit up to read. So it was kind of a compromise on where to put the bed. So there's no legs on the bed at all. It's two bars going across and secured into the walls. And let me see if um, there's always an issue, especially if you're in the deep south, with mold and mildew on your mattress. So the way you get circulation to your mattress is cutting um, these little holes. Yes. All the way under all through. All the, all the way through. Like, you know, about every inch or so we cut one. And you haven't had any mold issues in three years? None whatsoever. Okay, the water system. This is your marine pump. You've seen that in all of the van builds. And it's just press and the water would come out. I don't have water in the system right now. We have two large freshwater tanks. Oh, yeah. And the gray water tank. So if I wanted to have water in there, and usually for the weight, I don't have water in there unless I'm boondocking way out in the desert, I'll take water with me. Uh, 
and then you have them hooked up with um how did you do the plumbing who did the plumbing oh well i did the plumbing that's that's a that is a youtube job <laughs> it's like oh <laughs> and look for a second there i thought that this uh, that this was the plumbing because i couldn't see the whole thing that's the snow brush or the yep. the, mm -hmm. the brush but you have um so you have it, the plumbing, the piping goes directly up to the sink, mm -hmm. and then on these two bottles, I don't see piping. Where is the piping on these? Oh, there it is, down below. Down below. And then it pumps out, comes up here to the faucet, Oh, and then, and then goes down into the gray water tank. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Great. And it's a nice little extra storage yeah, too. That's a really generous uh, cabinet there. It's it is you, you know, know I water down there. You have a big gray water tank. Yeah. What, what do you do with your gray water? Um, gray water can be um, released if there's not soap in it um, on any um, asphalt. You normally don't want to release it on directly onto the ground. And every state's a little bit different on what to do with gray water. And I really seldom use it because I have, as you can see, the gallons of water. And I, it's so much easier just to pour a drop of water on my toothbrush yeah. <laughs> than to make sure that my uh, freshwater tanks are filled up. You know, I've started using a spray bottle to brush my teeth. That's a good idea, yeah, too. I just, I just put the nozzle in my mouth, get a little water in there. I spray it on the toothbrush. That's perfect. Yeah, uses yeah. a lot less water, too. Yeah. And since I don't cook, uh, and I'll, I will, uh, you know, I have in the back, and we'll go to the back in a few minutes, uh, I have lots of tubs, and I'll just make a little tub of water and wash my dishes in a little tub of water and toss it out. You know, they have, um, this is a fantastic soap. The Grove Ultimate Dish Soap. Let's see if we can get that. Yeah. Yes. Grove Ultimate Sustainable dish Power soap. for Healthy Home. It's, it's a great product for for when you do release just a little bit of that gray water. But it's amazing how little gray water there is. And I see that you cook with butane. I do. Um, I didn't cook at all the first two years, but when my kids were coming out, they wanted to eat. I <laughs> I don't get that about kids. I fed them for 20 years, but they still they still want to eat. <laughs> and so I bought the little uh, stove. This is the first year I've had a little burner stove, and we'll go to the back and look at what all's treasures are back there. But right above your hand is a pole, and it's simply a drapery rod. Um, of shower curtain rod and this is the only privacy that I feel like I need at night and I probably don't even need that and it blocks out the light and when you're traveling you just squish it right back together and because it can blow when you're driving with the windows down I do just hook it back into the little handle Oh and, yeah, and that again was no inst installation involved, no screwing, no hammers, no nails. So you can see the lights are with, with the little tiny push pins. So uh, when we say this was a really easy build, that's what we mean. It was a really easy build. Just low tech. Yes, anybody I, could do it. I like finding my clothes, so I wanted a, a, a closet. Um, and that's my closet. You can hang your clothes. I can even. hang my you clothes can have a up. Yeah. You know, and, and, and Nissans are smaller, shorter than the extended cargo van. They are, but they are so straight on the sides that they're a really, really easy build. Mm -hmm. uh, they have stopped making this high top Nissan NV3500, uh, but they're still on the lots in the southern parts of the United States, the 2021 are still on many of the lots and if you have a chance to grab one it's just an amazing vehicle um, mine's an eight cylinder because i do a lot of mountain driving and i wanted that power um yeah i pay for it a little bit in gasoline but it's worth it to me what do you get yes. uh, in gasoline i get anywhere between 12 and 16 which is much better than an rv you know it's it's not a small economy car but and as far as reliability goes how's it the i found the increase? nissan very reliable and easy to work on the things that have have not even broken down but you replace brakes you know like anything else and get your tires rotated and watch your fluids and um, i haven't had any major problems i had the alternator replaced uh, this winter and that was a little bit of a problem on this type of nissan because you can't get to it easily and uh, 
So they had to struggle a little bit to get to it. Mm. And I did make a, a beginner mistake that I wouldn't make again, and I bought a northern car. Now, northern cars have been exposed to salt and rust. Right. So if I ever have the opportunity to replace it or need to replace it, it's worth it to find a car that was raised in the South. <laughs> <laughs> now, I was not kidding when I said I don't cook. So oysters beans, chicken, peanut butter, of course, you know, when you have that craving. And then something that's really, really strange, but don't laugh at me. When you want those fresh organic vegetables, go to the baby food aisle and get these packs <laughs> oh, for like, you. I'm sorry. <laughs> get these packs for like 98 cents. You know, they're great for hiking. Uh, they're great for any time you're like, oh, I should have some mango and have some yellow vegetables or green vegetables. That is ingenious. Yeah. And it's much, much, it's the same that you would get if you were in a hiking store for four or five dollars a pouch. But when it's baby food, it's 98 cents or a dollar 25 a pouch. Um, yeah, so that, that's the extent of my food. That If I get tired of the chicken, I have two flavors of barbecue sauce I can put in my chicken. <laughs> you know, I can heat water. I can heat water. I really can heat water now that I have the propane and the stove. So I'm really proud of being able to heat water. And so I have my oatmeal. I don't have to eat my oatmeal cold. <laughs> so, um... Yes, you wanted to lean over and show that, and then when we get uh, outside, we'll explain why I did that. <laughs> All right, so everyone, uh, this I don't, I, this is a secret that, you know, I like to do tours where there's a surprise in the van. This is a surprise. The bed, the bed ends here, and for about 18 inches or so, it continues with this empty space between the bed and the back doors. Chris has a an important reason for this design decision. <laughs> we'll go explain it. <laughs> so this is the back of the van, <laughs> obviously. But the reason I left the gap is this is like my only little safety feature because I'm never scared on the road. I'm just like pretty confident. I know things that can happen. I'm a realist. Um, so I gave myself this one little safety feature that I can get out this side of the bed and hit my uh, doorknob if someone's trying to come on in the inside. And, you know, so, if, if we, just let's just show everyone. This is an important safety feature I think anybody who has an NV 3500 should mm -hmm. know about. Um, this is a door knob, a door Lock. pull yeah. that you can open the van with from the inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even if, you know, heaven forbid there was a fire up front, I could still get out the back. Now that's not going to happen because I don't cook. <laughs> but just in case, you know, I do have, a, you know, I burn incense and I enjoy having candles occasionally. Um, so if something really weird happened, I could always get out the back of the van. Yeah. I also like, you know, just sitting here and watching the sunset, you know, it's like we'll put pillows here and, you know, under our butts and our backs and lean against the furniture. This is like everything I own. Oh, yes. These. Every woman knows what these are, baby wipes. Now, um, when you live alone, you really don't have to take as many showers as you would if you were going to work every day. Uh, but sometimes you just want to clean out the pits a little bit and, I'll, and smell good. So we keep those handy. And then, like I said, I have lots of buckets that I could just use for washing uh, Sometimes I give myself a pedicure, and you know, I'm just like sitting out in the desert soaking my feet. Yeah. <laughs> so, we could even do, uh, have a little day, a spa day. Yes, you can have a spa day. day. Uh, and then I just put a ton of hooks up. I uh, steal all my kids' clothes because it makes me feel close to them. So I have my son's hoodies and uh, his AmeriCorps. <laughs> coat that he didn't want anymore and then my bike backpacks when I go hiking um, this was laying around the house and I thought that should be useful it hasn't proved to be useful <laughs> um, but now I just haven't taken it down <laughs> 
it's just little pockets, you know. I have um, oh, yeah. oh, it's stuff cute, in them. Such a cute pattern. Yeah, it is a nice pattern. What these hooks? Just know that you will have to replace them probably every six to eight months because they just. I don't know if it's the vibration of the truck or just the the glue is not strong enough, but they do come off. Yeah. The, yeah, the but it's they're really inexpensive to replace. Yeah, I found that the glue can dry out. Oh, is that what's going that, on? That may be part of There's it. something was going on. Didn't know what it was. And again, we have this really deep storage. It's like, oh, fast food containers. And the things that you're like, would I ever need that? But it's so small, why should I throw it away? So that's the sticky side tape and nuts and bolts and rope. I love having a clothesline. And that size fits three across right there. There's my extension, my small extension cord. I have a major extension cord. And I have, a, in the black bins, there's all sorts of tools and stuff. And because I have a little slow coolant leak, I keep plenty of coolant in the car and check my coolant occasionally. And usually have about six of these if I'm going out into the desert. Man, so. what do you like to keep in terms of first aid? <coughs> Uh, bandages and all the ointments, <laughs> you know, the, the antibiotic ointment. Um, what's the one for itching? Oh, antihistamine. No, antihistamine. Um. Oh well, we know what we like. Itch ointment. <laughs> I mean, itch ointment. Just for fun, like because I used to wear shoes and now I just wear these. And I do a lot, a lot of hiking. I do have. Uh, if there's any sign of sweaty toes, I do have the antifungal ointment. That's about it. Um, lots of band-aids. I'm using band-aids all the time because right now I'm doing a lot of landscaping jobs and the roses are just really mean to me. Uh, but yeah. What a beautiful look. Beautiful the thing colors. I could not give up. Uh, I have an addiction and I'm going to drop a brand name. I have an addiction to April Cornell and all of her fabrics and all of so, so I could not give up my tablecloths. So that's why there's a tablecloth on either end just hiding the pressed board. It works. It works. It works. Yeah. And right there you can get a, a good view of my fan. It's the only thing I had somebody install for me because I didn't want to uh, climb up there and cut the 14 inch opening mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. in the roof myself. It was like something I thought should not be messed up. Mm -hmm. So I had an expert do that. What brand is that? Oh, don't ask me because it's not the it's not the van it's not the brand most of us would say, uh, but they're the same. It's not the Max Air, but it's the other one. Oh, the Fantastic fan. It's the Fantastic. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And then things that I will probably never use. I have pool noodles, so when I get in the lakes, you know, I can just lay around in the lakes. Oh, look at this. I'm so proud because I did not have until I got the stove. That's it. That's my kitchen right there. I do have a spoon and a spatula. That's, that's, my, that's my whole kitchen. That's all you need. That's all I need with my little stove and this little Coleman stove that I bought down here at Sam's. Mm -hmm. so, oh. Oh, and this, like, if you're going on the road, just start right now because you're going to need quarters for the wash. Oh, oh. <laughs> and this is like many, many, many years of quarters. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just about out after three years. And I was like, that full when you, when you hit the road? Uh, that was full. Yeah, that was full. Yeah. <laughs> so you can yeah. almost measure the amount of time you've been on the road by how <laughs> full that <laughs> money jar is. <laughs> well, in some of the campgrounds, a gallon of water is just a quarter, a quarter uh, which is wonderful. Oh, and then washers and dryers and all that sort of thing. Wow. Well, yeah. So that's my home. I hope beautiful, you like it. Beautiful home, Chris. Thank beautiful you. Home. I wanted to ask you also something that a lot of folks doing van life or just living nomadically experience mm -hmm. is uh, how to connect to other people on the road. That's not much of a problem for me because I love public libraries and public librarians are like the most friendly people in the world. They want to talk about their town. They want to talk about their town history. Um, um, senior citizen centers are amazing. Go out and get lunch for $2 and play cards all day with the seniors. Uh, <laughs> some of them open early, so you get free coffee. Uh, well, you know, you throw some of the coins in the tip jar for the free coffee. Um, 
And then what I do in this town, because I'm usually in Brattleboro for several months, is you know, I put out an ad this year because of the gas prices saying, I need some odd jobs, you know, just for cash uh, just so I can save up some gas money to get back to Arizona so I won't freeze here. And I've just met wonderful, wonderful people. You know, I don't want to brag about Brattleboro, but it's an incredible town. Yeah, it is. So you found lots of ways to connect through work and hobbies, and mm -hmm. business and pleasure. Volunteer work, uh, working at the animal shelters is a, a wonderful a volunteer job that I enjoy. Uh, just any place that I can volunteer. And when I go into a town where I'm going to be for uh, several weeks, I just go to their Facebook page and start reading their opinion of their town, the needs in their town. And you'll see somebody publish and say, I need somebody to help me move. You know, I need somebody to uh, walk my dog. You know, I need a pet sitting job. You know, it's like, so it's really, really easy. People are, maybe it's because I'm older. Maybe it's because I'm female. I don't know. It's, um, they just are willing to reach out and, and give me a chance. And then word of mouth spreads that I'm an okay person. Yeah. <laughs> it's an okay town and you're an okay person. Absolutely. And it's an okay then. You know, it's it's not a $40,000 sprinter <laughs> oh, but it's home cool. and, and how much do you did the van cost you to build out um this cost me right at two thousand. Oh, yeah and most of that was the wool the wool was right at 800 so after that that vanity is just from home depot the sink is from home depot the uh, fake tin press tin is from home depot um so yeah, and those are just little Rubbermaid shelves for my food. Oh no! And your mattress was that from home, or did you buy it? Too? No, that is a um, a foam, a memory foam mattress, and it comes too long, so you just have to cut off. Um, this is a cover, so inside is the foam, and you can just cut it off to length with a kitchen knife. Oh. It's that easy. Well, thank you so much, Chris. You're so welcome. Look, for an introvert, you sure do give a fun van tour. Well, yeah, but don't try to have a conversation with me because I just like stutter all over myself. I'm like, <laughs> well, you obviously are passionate about your home on wheels. I am. And, I am. And passionate about sharing the message that it doesn't have to be complicated. No. And it can be affordable and anyone can get out there on the road. No. Okay. One of the things, one of the reasons I want to be known in a community is because I am homeless. And when I go into communities, um, people have their own views of who the homeless are and why they're homeless and why they're not doing anything about being, you know, employed or whatever. And I want them to see that there's thousands of us women on the road. There's thousands of families that are economic refugees fire refugees from California and especially New Mexico this year, uh, domestic violence refugees. So, you know, when you see us parked in your community, take a minute to get to know us, but, but whatever you feel, try not to feel fear because we're nothing to be afraid of. You know, we're just people who said, I can't live in the United States on my income. This is one way that you're going to see homeless. This is what homeless looks like. Um, not what you, you know, some people are very, very visible and we're the invisible homeless. I'll just put it that way. Thousands of us out there and many are older women. The woman I camped by last summer was 82 years old. She's been on the road for 30 years since she retired. She's 82 and uh, she can't afford any place to live. You can go into, uh, you know, public housing, but then you're trapped in public housing. And, and that's a godsend for somebody, for a child, and you know they need that public housing. So I don't want to take a public housing slot unless I have to. I may have to someday. But that's just my little pitch. Mm -hmm. The Invisible Homeless, we're out here. We're kind. We're friendly. We're helpful. We want to contribute to the world. That's it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chris. You You're have, welcome. You have a big heart, a beautiful home on wheels. Thank you. And um, just thank you for welcoming us into your world. Yeah, anytime. <laughs> Honk when you see me. <laughs> bye bye.
cannot repeat any of that. <laughs>